And thank you for being here. Yeah, I'm going to talk about experiences incorporating sign languages. Um, specifically, I will talk about a project that we worked on for about a year. But um, let me introduce the topic first. So um, it all starts with accessibility. So um, there are, uh, if you um, are, for example, deaf or hard of hearing today, which, for example, in the US, there are about one million people that are deaf. So um, if you have some kind of problem like that, um, community and especially accessibility are really, really important, doing th basic things like calling for an appointment for uh, at the doctor. That should be something that should be easy to do. And also there are situations where social networks, like in this uh, short video, um, oh my God. Today uh, she's actually, what? well, Today she's not I'm playing. Three places and okay, well. all three people signed. Well, in this case, uh, we have uh, a uh, content creator in LA, which is just, um, I think there is some issue there, but <laughs> he's just uh, sharing in social networks uh, using American Sign Language um, how was her day, and bringing community around that is pretty important, and it's something that 10 years ago uh, wasn't possible. So, um, I, I presented a bit the context, but I will talk about the applications that we can build, um, um, challenges, and after that, the conclusion. So, what are the uh, use cases um, where uh, you can implement a sign language or you can uh, provide some help to a heart of hearing of deaf people. Uh, one is uh, call centers, which is the one I will focus a bit more. That's the main vertical, probably. There are also social networks. Um, it's also applied, could be for telehealth, um, because obvious reasons. And education, also, it's another vertical well where um, sign language interactions uh, make sense, too. So. Um, in this project uh, that we work on, we wanted to provide uh, sign language support. Uh, it was it's an open source platform, and it's a government initiative. Um, it's customizable, is security oriented, and yeah, the idea was to have government organizations or um, medium-sized or small companies that are not capable of providing a person that can uh, use American Sign Language. Um, they would just integrate their, this open source platform and they would be able to redirect the call to an uh, external person that um, acts as an intermediate uh, third person translating. So uh, I would a bit technical here, but just briefly, I, uh, the, the tech stack that we use in this case was pretty straightforward, using asterisk for, for handling calls, uh, Node.js for the backend, um, uh, WebRTC for, um, obviously, from the website, and yeah, some other technologies that are pretty frequent in, in web development. So we had the, we have a few requirements here. Um, we wanted a system that first allow um, multi-party calling, so we wanted to integrate um, the, those hard phones or soft phones that um, deaf people use. And they usually use SIP, so it's a bit of a legacy system uh, connected to the new web applications. So we, we needed to d allow WebRTC to see, but, and also see to WebRTC communications. We also wanted to have um, very, well, n some interesting functionalities like recording, monitoring that are easier to implement um, when, when you do it on the web, especially multi-party. So what were the challenges? 
Um, well, first, choosing the right open source tool. There are actually a lot. Here I just mentioned two. <laughs> um, we went through several options. Um, we wanted um, some media server um, that could handle MCU, so that means mixing videos, uh, mixing video streams. Um, there aren't that many, and then that reduced the scope of, of the options we had with current and free switch. And then because the long-term solution aimed to be a bit more web RTC oriented than voice oriented, we opted a bit for current, although free switch is a great technology, but in this case, uh, we thought it makes a little bit more sense to to use current as uh, MCU. Then we wanted, that was for the media, and then we also need to handle the signaling, which is uh, the coordination between a web application on one side and the phone or the user agent calling from a VoIP network on the other. And there are three very famous um, open source signaling uh, Applicate well um, SDKs. Uh, one of them is the, the older one is GSIP, um, which has been out there for a long time. It's very robust. Um, then there is CIPGS, which is a fork based on GSIP, and that one uh, is a bit more new, um, but this uh, maybe has a bit more documentation. Uh, very similar actually. And then there is the newest one, uh, Dratio, which is uh, slightly different. It's more focused on working on a back end, not on the front end as the other two. And well, it, it's a very interesting um, approach that allows you to be a bit more flexible using SIP uh, in a JavaScript application. Finally, we chose GSSIP mainly because um, uh, we work, well, we have worked with it a bit more also our partners, so the, the company that work with us, knew about it, so we have to, to play it safe, but the, the other two options prove uh, to work pretty good as well. So um, this is the high level architecture of how this, the basic application would look like. Um, we wanted to achieve multi-party, so um, we need um, several connections from the web. In this case, we have two clients. And on the other side, we have, we have another additional SIP client, which in this case, we could be a, a deaf person calling in uh, through a video phone. Uh, would connect through asterisk uh, to a media server that could handle mixing of video streams. And you would mix the, the three streams together so all the parties can see the three streams, get the audio, and so on. And the signal, as you can see in this case, we use GSC, but we had to modify it a bit because it's built for running on the browser. And in this case, we wanted it to run on the server. Um, so, so we had to, to f modify it a bit. So actually, it's a fork of GSC where we are running there. And then this would be a bit of the flow of how this would look like. Um, there is uh, on one side the VRS device calling to asterisk and kind of what was explaining, going through uh, some kind of a change of signaling messages, SIP over web sockets. And then uh, after the call is accepted, sending a 200 OK, uh, the, the media uh, would go through uh, between the, in this case, two peers, uh, WebRTC cl client and a user agent on the other side. So now I, I want to talk about the major challenges that we face here, and this probably is the biggest. <laughs> um, interoperability is um, a huge pain, especially if you want to work with many different devices. Um, that Some are hard phones, implement C protocol in a different way. Sometimes some, uh, uh, in this case, accept some resolutions are um, accepted for some devices, but doesn't work for others, so the image maybe doesn't look perfect. Uh, also, RTCP maxing, which is the, um, uh, well, some kind of message that is sent for um, call control uh, between peers. Um, it, it, it's not uh, supported in some devices, so 
you need to take care of things like that or codex. Also on the web, you prefer to use VP8, but on on the on zip devices, uh, it's much more common to use H.264 for video. So there are things to take into account, and and we needed to be flexible on the signaling server, which is where we have the current and the GS zip, uh, where we kind of react based on how the code is going, and we will we are using ICE also trickle eyes if it's supported or if it's not. So there, there are a lot of surprises when, when you're working on interoperability. Security was a huge concern. Um, and in this case, we needed to, to do, well, four main things. First, on the back end, the, the models that we use had some vulnerabilities. So we needed to fix that uh, because it was open source um, project, um, we could actually um, push directly the, the, the changes uh, to the, to the um, GitHub repository. Also, of course, we wanted everything to go uh, secure, so SSL for WebSockets, SIP authentication, and on the browser we use uh, DTLS as RTP, but on, on, this, on SIP side of things, sometimes uh, we had to use SDS because um, yeah, the challenge using DTLS sometimes with legacy systems. Then testing is another challenge when you have many devices and browsers and so on. So first, um, there is the basic testing when you do unit testing, just verify that the basic functions you have on the code work. In this case, we use Jasmine and Karma, which are some um, um, tools for yeah unit testing, like uh, automate automatizations of tests. And then on interoperability, we use Kite for testing how things work on different browsers. Um, so we could verify that, for example, the ICE connection, which is just a part of, of the code establishing works. Um, but yeah, we, we check um, a few things. Uh, we also do a, a call loop and verify that also um, we get video back and, and so on. So that's some kind of automatized thing every time we, we change things on the code. And this is one opportunity. So doing these things, there, there are some ways to do what we did easily, just implementing GSZIP and asterisk, um, but you are not able to do this. Um, if you use GSZIP and asterisk directly, you can have a one-to-one -one call and that's very straightforward. There are many demos out there. But if you want to have multi-party calls from, in this case, it's a, a, a lean phone, so it would be like a soft phone on one side, and at the back, well, it, there is like the web. But you can have multi-party, and you can add recording, and hold on hold in the web and, and from the SIP device as well. So that combination, um, it, it was, really important for, for this project, and to allow um, American Sign Language you must prioritize video. <clears throat> so conclusions on a future on uh, implementing um, um, sign language translation in, in call centers specifically. Well, um, based on a, a survey, and I actually already shared that in, in a presentation this year. Um, we, we did a, a survey and we could gather that um, AI, machine learning, is one of the most um, common um, new technologies being used in real-time applications. So when you ask a WebRTC developer, what like technology are you using? Uh, are you using AR, uh, VR? So it's, Machine learning is, is one of the hot topics there. So it seems that probably it would make sense in, in this case because now we are doing an approach of a person in the middle translating, um, but probably in the future we could use things like um, image recognition for, for sign language translation. Um, that's something already being discussed with the client today. Um, there are other many verticals that use uh, machine learning in, in WebRTC apps. But in this case, we think for sign language, um, image 
recognition probably will be the, the main one, and then maybe doing that um, speech to text, but um, yeah. So next steps, uh, here is just a basic demo. Um, we've opened CV and TensorFlow. Uh, you, today you already can train um, uh, with images what each um, movement or sign means. And in this case, I train it to just to do two, two basic um, recognitions, and I want to show you how this looks like. So I, I'm doing this move, but it's hello, I want this move, and everybody. So basically, you train this with many images, and, and then it would, um, yeah, if it recognizes the, 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 the image that, that matches with some symbol, um, it will translate it. Uh, this is based on an open source project from Shekid. Um, it was actually done one year ago for doing, for Alexa. This is a well-known project. Um, but we thought that we could um, maybe fork that and re reuse it for our use case um, for real time from WebRTC to SIF or SIF to WebRTC. And another thing that actually I didn't know before is that uh, um, sign language is not only sign. <laughs> so just using signs, you are not going to be able to translate properly. And we thought that an, an additional thing to add I into this estimates would be uh, using some post estimation. In this case, uh, PostNet is a very famous TensorFlow um, project which allows you to, well, basically uh, detect the, the position of the person. So we thought that these two um, open source uh, projects could be a good, like, first <laughs> um, proof of concept if we can combine both and, and be able to, to achieve um, sign language to, to text. So the conclusions and future here um, are, well, first, um, more WebRTC-based call centers are coming from our perspective as um, uh, developers and engineers working with, uh, as a consultants with many companies. Uh, we see that call centers today using WebRTC are starting to be uh, common, or at least m more than before. <laughs> and also, there are new technologies, opportunities uh, that, well, will let us make customer interactions more inclusive. Um, one of the bad things I want to mention is still a big issue today is that web parties interoperability uh, with SIP devices is still a major challenge. Um, and that probably will still be for a, for a while, but um, it's possible. It just, um, you need to take care of things like testing or, or um, yeah, interoperability. So, uh, that's it. Uh, thank you for, for being here, and if someone has any questions, yeah, feel free to ask. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, uh, Alberto, for sharing that, especially on the challenges. I keep seeing those challenges. <laughs> any questions from the audience? Then a quick question from me just before we go to the panel. Given your experience, how long do you think it would be until we see sign language being included you, you know, as normal within uh, contact centers? As normal, I think it will take probably, Decade? no, decades, but years probably. <laughs> <laughs> because, well, it happens a bit like with uh, voice to text today, you know, like yeah. when you are using speech analytics in Google, it doesn't work that perfectly yeah. well. You know, there are still some, some things that fail, so I think we are actually planning to work on this already this year, so it's not something far away. It's just that having it as a commodity in call centers maybe will take a while. Understood. Excellent. Okay.